The Finals has been my obsession over the last week. This game is a perfect blend of fast action and competitive team play. Therefore, getting the right balance between high frame rates and great visibility is crucial. So today, I'll be diving into each graphic setting and sharing my test results. To begin, let's take a look at resolution scaling. We'll start with TAAU at 100% resolution, which in this case is native 4K. Fairly standard image quality you'd expect at native resolution. Next, let's take a look at the different DLSS options. DLAA on the surface doesn't seem to do much except reduce our frame rate, but taking a closer look shows that it does sharpen the image a bit. At 4K, this isn't really noticeable, but it could help at lower resolutions where anti-aliasing can sometimes make the image more blurry. DLSS quality brings a big jump in frame rate, a 55% increase over native, with the overall image actually looking pretty similar. DLSS balance brings a modest bump in frame rate with minimal visual degradation, while DLSS performance is noticeably blurry compared to native. DLSS Ultra Performance brings the biggest performance improvement, but is also by far the blurriest image, though to be fair, at 4K this is still relatively playable. Moving on over to FSR, we can see that FSR quality is a bit worse than DLSS quality in both performance and visual fidelity, but still an improvement over native. Keep in mind that this was tested with an RTX 3080, and results may be different on an AMD GPU. FSR balanced is pretty similar to both native and DLSS balanced, but again, the performance improvement is a bit less than DLSS. The same goes for FSR performance, which looks pretty similar to DLSS performance, but doesn't boost the frame rate by quite as much. However, FSR Ultra performance matches its DLSS counterpart while offering similar levels of visual fidelity. Finally, let's take a look at XCSS. XCSS Ultra Quality is comparable to DLSS quality, arguably a bit sharper. However, it brings the smallest performance improvement out of all the upscaling solutions, with just 13 more FPS on average compared to native. XCSS Quality brings about the same performance as DLSS Quality and FSR Quality, but looks slightly blurry in comparison. I wouldn't bother with the other XCSS options, they are simply worse in quality and performance compared to DLSS and FSR. The quality and performance scaling is pretty similar at 1440p, but overall DLSS does seem to be the better option. Now let's take a look at RTX Global Illumination. You might be tempted to switch this to static for maximum performance, and you wouldn't be wrong, but there is an argument for enabling RTX in this game. This is with RTX set to static. Notice how dark the room is below me. You can barely see the training bot in the corner. Now watch what happens when I set RTX to dynamic low. See how the light from above gradually fills the room from the hole in the ceiling. After several seconds, the entire room is well lit. This is how RTX Global Illumination works. The difference between the dynamic settings is how fast this lighting is processed. Watch how much quicker it is with RTX set to Dynamic Epic. When the lighting isn't changing, the impact to FPS is actually pretty minimal. However, the frame rate does take a dip during the lighting update. Despite this, I personally set RTX to Dynamic Epic. A lot of combat in the finals can happen indoors where it's relatively dark. With the amount of destruction in this game, being able to have maximum visibility peering down a hole in the roof, in my opinion, is a big advantage. If you want to enable this but the performance hit is too much for your graphics card, try setting RTX to a lower dynamic setting. Keep in mind that RTX puts more load on the CPU, so with lower resolutions and other more CPU bound scenarios, the performance impact might be higher. Now let's dive into each of the visual settings. View distance seems to have pretty minimal impact on frame rate, so if you don't like objects popping in and out, set this to high or epic. Anti-aliasing doesn't seem to be doing much, and it only affects native resolution with no upscaling, so set this to low to maximize performance. Shadows is basically disabled on low and looks the same from medium to epic. If you like shadows, set this to medium, otherwise set this to low. Post-processing is the same story. 
Setting this to low disables ambient occlusion and bloom, with medium to epic having these enabled. High and epic have quite a bit of bloom, which I'm not a fan of, so I've set this to medium. The texture setting doesn't seem to be doing anything. The description says it affects terrain textures, but I don't really see a difference and there doesn't seem to be any performance impact. Low is probably fine here. Effects is essentially an eye candy setting with fairly big frame rate penalties. The medium to epic settings enable reflections and subsurface scattering with various degrees of fidelity, while low has these disabled. I like how these effects look, so I've set this to medium, but low is much better for keeping a high frame rate. Foliage doesn't seem to be doing anything either. I tested this in a few locations in the practice room, but perhaps it's only observable in a live map. In any case, more leaves means worse visibility, so I'd recommend setting this to low. Global illumination resolution doesn't seem to affect the fidelity of RTX, but still measurably impacts performance. This is true regardless of setting RTX to a dynamic setting or setting it to static. Set this to low for maximum performance. I hope this video helped you dial in your settings to maximize your frame rate and graphics quality. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the finals.